Everyone needs an education, and school is the best place to get it. But there are touchy subjects which are not part of the school curriculum. Join us as we look at 20 horrible historical facts school doesn't teach. 20. The Opium Wars in China The Opium Wars in the mid-19th century were a critical juncture in modern Chinese history. The first Opium War was fought between China and Great Britain from 1839 to 1842. In the Second Opium War from 1856 to 1860, a weakened China fought both Great Britain and France. China lost both wars. The terms of its defeat were a bitter pill to swallow. China had to cede the territory of Hong Kong to British control, open treaty ports to trade with foreigners, and grant special rights to foreigners operating within the treaty ports. In addition, the Chinese government had to stand by as the British increased their opium sales to people in China. The British did this in the name of free trade and without regard to the consequences for the Chinese government and Chinese people. 19. The Story of Minnie Dean Williamina Dean, a New Zealander, was found guilty of infanticide and executed. She was the only woman executed in New Zealand. Several more women were sentenced to death, but all had their sentences changed to life or long-term imprisonment. Dean was seen boarding a train in 1895 with a tiny baby and a hat box, but was later seen departing with only the hat box and no baby. Railway porters later reported that the hat box was unusually hefty. A woman named Jane Hornsby came forward, claiming to have handed Dean her granddaughter, Eva, and garments identified as belonging to this kid were discovered at Dean's home, but Dean was unable to produce the child herself. A search along the train line revealed no trace of the child. Dean was arrested and charged with murder. Her garden was dug up and three remains were discovered. An inquest determined that one child died of asphyxia, while another, Dorothy Edith Carter, one-year-old, died of a laudanum overdose. The reason of death for the third child has not been determined. Dean was charged with the murders. Thumbnail. I don't know if the people we see imprisoned in these cages in our thumbnail are students that misbehaved in class. But if they are, whatever country this school system is in, it has taken detention to another level. The Great EMU War of Australia. The EMU appears prominently on the Australian coat of arms, but the country was not always so proud of having the largest population of the species. After World War I, Australia gave veterans land to farm in the western part of the country to help them reintegrate into civilian life. Harvest went off without a hitch until the Great Depression hit in 1929, when the government put pressure on farmers to increase wheat yields and promised help in the form of subsidies. Wheat prices fell, and the subsidies never arrived. However, something else arrived. 20,000 EMUs that ate crops and destroyed farmlands. The desperate farmers begged the Ministry of Agriculture for assistance, but instead found a potential solution with the Ministry of War, which dispatched two regiments of soldiers, machine guns, and 10,000 rounds of ammunition to annihilate the flightless, six-foot-tall beasts. However, things did not go as planned. The swarm of birds dispersed and vanished into the scenery. Bullets were wasted, and attempts to herd the EMUs into a mass slaughtering trap were unsuccessful. On November 9, 1932, a Western Australian representative informed Parliament that the war had been won by the EMUs. 17. The Siege of Leningrad In September 1941, German forces closed in on the Soviet city of Leningrad, beginning a roughly 900-day siege that claimed the lives of 800,000 residents. Hitler had long seen Leningrad as a primary objective in the attack. It housed Russia's Baltic fleet and had over 600 enterprises, ranking second only to Moscow in terms of industrial output. In the late summer of 1941, Leningrad's people rushed to build trenches and anti-tank fortifications, but the Soviets' unprepared Red Army and volunteer forces were crushed one fight after another. The German assault lasted until late September, when Soviet forces eventually stopped Army Group North in the suburbs of Leningrad. With his forces now trapped in trench warfare, Hitler altered his strategy and ordered them to prepare for a siege. The tide would finally start to change early the following year. The Soviets had already made multiple fruitless attempts to break through the siege, generally with little progress and heavy deaths. But in January 1943, the Red Army captured a minor land bridge from the Nazis. 
Leningrad was released on January 27, 1944, after nearly 900 days of blockade. The triumph was announced with a 24 salvo salute from the city's guns, and citizens broke out in spontaneous jubilation on the streets. 16. Mozart's Lewd Songs Mozart composed lovely music and was unquestionably a kid prodigy. At the age of three, he could play piano melodies, and by the age of four, he was writing. By the age of 12, he had completed 10 symphonies. Mozart loved penning both beautiful and filthy tunes. A good example is his song, Lech mich im Arsch, which translates as Lick Me in the Ass. Mozart is considered to have suffered from both OCD and Tourette's. He had many facial tics and had to be constantly moving while tapping his hands and feet. He also lacked impulse control and would continually make dirty rhymes and inappropriate jokes. However, the diagnosis is uncertain, and he could just have always been in a childlike state of mind. 15. Hitler and Disney Adolf Hitler is not best recognized for his love of movies. His other characteristics, such as rampant anti-Semitism and potential madness, have garnered far more attention in history books, and rightfully so. It's become an urban legend that the great dictator's favorite film was the fanciful fable Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. But what's even stranger is that the legend is most likely accurate. Hitler admired Walt Disney's style and aspired to be an artist. Snow White was the first feature-length Disney animated film to be released in 1937, and it caught the globe by storm, albeit not to the same extent as Hitler did two years later. The film's themes and style, which harkened back to a simpler pre-industrial era, complemented Hitler's love of traditional folkloric life. The Fuhrer is said to have considered the film one of the best ever made. 14. Pharaoh Pepe II and his dislike for insects. Pepe II, an old kingdom Egyptian pharaoh, ascended to the throne at the age of six. Perhaps it was his privileged upbringing that led to his becoming one of Egypt's most demanding monarchs. In addition to ordering the capture of a dancing pygmy for his pleasure, he had his slaves coat themselves in honey to keep those bothersome flies away from him. He ordered that his slaves be covered in honey to operate as fly traps, luring swarms of flies away from him and toward their own honey-coated bodies. Not many Egyptians shared Pepe II's distaste for flies. In fact, because of the insect's speed and persistent determination, the fly came to be revered as a symbol of both perseverance and tenacity. Soldiers who demonstrated such skills on the battlefield would receive golden flies. 13. The Pope's War Against Cats Many people claim that Pope Gregory IX despised cats. Cats were introduced to Europe from Egypt by the Romans and enjoyed a good reputation for a long time, most likely because they were such help to agricultural communities. Vermin decimated harvests, but cats were nature's perfect solution. They literally can't eat anything that isn't meat, therefore they pose no threat to the crops. Meanwhile, they require meat on a regular basis and know how to obtain it, so they excel at hunting and devouring vermin. This had something to do with ancient cat worship in locations like Egypt, which produced clams by farming the lush soil surrounding the Nile. But feline-human relations deteriorated in the early 1230s, when Pope Gregory IX published the papal bull Vox in Rama. According to legend, this bull declared cats to be Satan's instruments and sparked a massive cat purge throughout medieval Europe with a focus on black cats, who were particularly Luciferian. As a result of their apparent resemblance to the devil, cats shifted from being objects of pagan adoration to being despised by Catholics. From then, it's only a few logical steps to the Black Death. Encouraged by Pope Gregory IX's edict, everyone in Europe slaughtered all cats. When the rats arrived carrying the plague, there were none remaining to keep the disease under control. 12. Napoleon Bonaparte's Height Misconception Napoleon Bonaparte, one of the world's most recognizable cultural icons, is usually depicted with one hand in his waistcoat and short and aggressive. His alleged small stature and fiery temper inspired the term Napoleon complex, which refers to the widely held belief that short men compensate for their lack of height through domineering behavior and aggression. According to three French sources, his valet, General Gourgaud, and his personal physician, Francesco Antomarchi, Napoleon's height was slightly more than five feet two inches. Using the French measurements of the time, that equates to around 1.67 meters, or slightly less than 5 feet 6 inches, which is slightly above average for a French man in the early 1800s. So, if Napoleon was of average height, where did the legend of his diminutive stature originate? In fact, it was mostly the work of one man, British cartoonist James Gilray.
Gilray's caricatures of Napoleon were so popular and influential that Napoleon said at the end of his life that Gilray did more than all the armies of Europe to bring me down. From the start, Gilray satirized Napoleon as a thunderous, boastful, if not necessarily short, character. In one cartoon, the speech bubble threatens to overwhelm the body of Napoleon. However, in this image, he appears to be more muscular than small. 11. The History of Dentures Until recently, false teeth were often genuine teeth extracted from another person or animal. The earliest record of dentures dates to the 7th century BC, when Etruscans fashioned them from animal and human teeth. This art disappeared with their civilization, but it reappeared in the 1700s with the technique of producing dentures. Sugar was widely known and available throughout Europe during the 1700s. As a result, tooth decay increased, and tooth-saving treatments such as root canals were yet to be created. This meant that many people were missing teeth, and it was uncommon for someone to reach 50 with all of their natural teeth. Although today's technology allows for comfortable and user-friendly dentures, this was not always the case. The original dentures had issues with fit, attachment, comfort, and longevity. When dentists worked to improve false teeth, they used a variety of materials and techniques, such as ivory, vulcanite, and porcelain. Fortunately for us, the 20th century brought new technologies and materials for dentures. Acrylic resins and other moldable plastics are now standard for denture and bridge partials. Because plastics are inexpensive and easy to work with, dentures are likewise significantly less expensive. 10. Thomas Edison's Talking Doll In 1890, Thomas Edison introduced some of the world's first talking dolls. Today, the remaining glassy-eyed cherubs stand around two feet tall. They have wooden limbs and a metal body, and they sound quite frightening. Edison constructed and sold approximately 500 of these in 1890. New technology now allows people to hear them for the first time in decades. The recordings did not sound significantly better in 1890 than they do today. The dolls flopped on the market, not because people thought they were weird, but because they were pricey, around $200 in today's money. People also thought the dolls were not lifelike enough. They needed moving mouths and voices that could be understood. Edison ceased producing the dolls after roughly a month. 9. The Tuskegee Syphilis Study The Tuskegee experiment began in 1932, when there was no recognized treatment for syphilis, a dangerous venereal illness. After being enticed by the promise of free medical care, 600 African-American males in Macon County, Alabama, joined the research, which planned to examine the disease's whole development. The participants were mostly sharecroppers, and many had never been to a doctor. Doctors from the United States Public Health Service, which was conducting the study, informed the participants, three 99 men with latent syphilis and a control group of 201 others who were disease-free, that they were being treated for bad blood, a term commonly used in the area at the time to refer to a variety of ailments. Health staff observed the men, but only gave them placebos like aspirin and mineral supplements, despite the fact that penicillin became the approved treatment for syphilis in 1947. 15 years into the trial. PHS researchers persuaded local physicians in Macon County not to treat the volunteers, and instead conducted the study at the Tuskegee Institute. To trace the disease's full evolution, researchers gave no effective care as the men died, became blind or mad, or suffered from other serious health problems as a result of their untreated syphilis. In the mid-1960s, a PHS venereal disease investigator in San Francisco called Peter Buxton learned about the Tuskegee study and expressed concerns to his superiors that it was immoral. In response, PHS authorities organized a committee to assess the study, but ultimately decided to keep it going. With the goal of tracking the volunteers until they all died, autopsies were performed, and the project data could be analyzed. 8. Books in Natural Leather Binding a book kept by Harvard University Library recently disclosed its macabre origins when scientists proved it was bound with human skin. The university staff believes that the book Destinies of the Soul was covered in the flesh of an unclaimed female mental patient who died naturally. Arsene Houssay, a writer, is claimed to have handed the book to his friend Dr. Ludovic Boulon in the mid-1880s, who appears to have carried out the peculiar binding. The practice of covering books in human skin, known as anthropodermic bibliopagy, became popular in the 19th century, though it is believed to have originated earlier. 7. Witch Trials in Europe Witches were viewed as malevolent by early Christians in Europe, which inspired the famous Halloween figure. Witch hysteria peaked in Europe in the mid-1400s, when many accused witches confessed to a range of wicked acts. Within a century, witch hunts were prevalent, with the majority of the guilty being burned at the stake or hanged. 
single women, widows, and other women on the outskirts of society were specifically targeted. Between 1500 and 1660, around 80,000 accused witches were executed throughout Europe. Germany had the highest witchcraft execution rate, whereas Ireland had the lowest. 6. The Chinese Massacre in the United States The Los Angeles Chinese Massacre of 1871 was a racial massacre against Chinese immigrants in Los Angeles, California, on October 24, 1871. Approximately 500 white and Latino Americans attacked, harassed, robbed, and murdered ethnic Chinese people in what is now known as the historic Chinatown District. The mob assembled after learning that a police officer and a rancher had been slain in a clash between rival Tongs, the Ninyung and Hongqiao. As word of their deaths circulated throughout the city, fueling allegations that the Chinese community was killing whites, more men gathered outside the boundaries of Negro Alley. Those dead accounted for more than 10% of Los Angeles' small Chinese community, which had numbered 172 previous to the massacre. Ten mob members were prosecuted, with eight convicted of manslaughter in these deaths. The convictions were reversed on appeal due to technicalities. 5. Stained Glass Church Window Catholic churches, particularly older ones, have long been noted for their elegant and intricate stained glass windows. Why do so many Catholic churches have them? For starters, long ago, most people were unable to read. Aside from a priest reading sacred writings from the Bible, stained glass windows were able to express scriptural concepts through their distinctive scenes. Churches at the time, built in the Gothic architectural style, had large windows. To fill the voids, artists would blow glass into various shapes and sizes, then assemble them like puzzle pieces to create dynamic visual sceneries for everyone to see within frames. Aside from depicting biblical images, stained glass windows were treasured for the way light passed through them, creating intriguing vistas within churches. Take Notre Dame Cathedral, which was built in 1345. This iconic Parisian church features a massive stained glass window that resembles a rose of light and is dubbed a window to the heavens due to its breathtaking beauty. Even today, tourists go to Notre Dame to admire its magnificent windows, which inspire them to think about things everlasting. Indeed, stained glass windows are used in Catholic churches to help bridge the divide between the physical and the spiritual. This glass, which provides viewers with an ethereal feeling of color and light for the story of the American flag. The American flag is a symbol of the country's rich history, and it could be much older than you realize. Some of them are hundreds of years old and hold great significance for the people of that country. When the United States of America was a new nation, it required its own flag. On June 14, 1777, a body known as the Continental Congress resolved that the United States should have its own flag made. Between 1777 and 1960, the flag was redesigned to look different. When this occurred, the American flag's design was updated to include another star to signify the newly formed state. Since its inception, the American flag has been reproduced and sold to millions of people all over the world. 3. Shadows of the Dead Following the atomic blasts that erupted over Hiroshima and Nagasaki, two of Japan's major cities on August 6 and 9, 1945, Black shadows of individuals and objects, such as bicycles, it's hard to believe that these shadows likely captured each person's final moments. But how did these shadows come to exist? According to experts, after each bomb burst, the blinding light and heat traveled outward from the site of implosion. The surrounding light bleached the concrete or stone surrounding the shadow. In other words, those creepy shadows depict how the sidewalk or structure appeared prior to the nuclear bomb. It's only that the rest of the surfaces were bleached, leaving the normally colored section seeming like a dark shadow. 2. Belgium's Atrocities in the Congo Free State Leopold II controlled the Congo as his own kingdom from 1885 to 1908. During this time, the country was compelled to accept the systematic exploitation of its natural resources, particularly ivory and rubber. The colonial authorities imposed a terror regime on the native population, which resulted in repeated mass executions and mutilations. Violence and terrorism were used to impose the will of the Belgian king and trading agents on the African people. 1. Little Ice Age's Impact on European History The Little Ice Age was a period of widespread cooling that lasted from around 1300 to around 1850 CE, during which average global temperatures dropped by up to 2 degrees Celsius, particularly in Europe and North America. Climatologists believe that the Little Ice Age was caused by a combination of reduced solar output. During the Little Ice Age, 
the climate influenced many social and cultural events around the world. Most of these were fascinating to learn about because frankly, I didn't learn any of this in school. Which one was your favorite? Why don't you let us know in the comments below? Well, that's it for now. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and let us know in the comments what you think. Check out our other videos and subscribe to be part of the fun. Click on the notification icon so you can see our new videos as soon as they're uploaded. Thanks for watching and see you next time.